Crisis Wing is the shmup equivalent of a basic bitch. Published by East Asia Soft, who kindly supplied me with a copy of the game, what we have here is a vertical stroller very much in the way of 90s toa plan style shmups, and very little in the way of much else at all. And that, by the way, is not a criticism. Crisis Wing is unashamed about its inspirations, it's unashamed about its old school nature, and it's unashamed of being, yeah, a bit of a basic bitch. But that's okay, because it doesn't pretend to have aspirations to be anything else, and that allows it to do what it does do in a perfectly solid manner. It doesn't muck you about with gimmicks, it doesn't try to wow you with something flashy that ends up pushing gameplay into second place, it just offers solid but simple old school shooting action. It starts with a brief launch sequence, and then you are away against its alien hordes over seven stages, each of which is very lengthy for a shmup. You only use two buttons, forward shot and bomb. Shot power-ups come in three flavours, red spread shot, green power shot and blue missiles. Keep collecting the same colour to increase the power, lose that power when you take a hit. Power-ups are contained in destructible boxes labelled with a P, and some also contain extra bombs. Bombs are kinda interesting, launching one sees a green skull erupt upwards from your ship with a width of about half the screen. Only enemies in or near this band are damaged, but even though it's not screen clearing, it does give you a moment of invulnerability. Deaths see you respawn instantly, although you can change this in the menu, but continuing will set you back to a checkpoint. I quite like this as it means losing all lives does feel like a harsher punishment, and it makes lazy credit feeding slightly frustrating, while not really punishing those trying to actually learn their way through the game. The scoring system is a real classic in that it is very simple but very devious. Killing certain enemies causes them to drop a medal, the first medal is worth 100 points, the next 200, and so on. At 1000 the increments change to 1000 each time, up to 10,000. However, if you miss one medal, the value of the next one is reset to zero. If you're chasing scores, this is going to lead to you taking some pretty big risks not to lose what you've built up, and even using a bomb to make sure you maintain your medal chain feels like the right thing to do at times. An interesting little quirk here is that if you miss one medal but there's still another on screen, catching that will save your chain, with the game giving a little laughter sound effect to indicate your last ditch save. Something slightly odd about the scoring system, however, is that when you start stage 1, you will likely connect medals with taking out waves of enemies. But that's not actually how things work. Instead, medals seem to appear relatively randomly, and in fact, in some stages, it can seem like the devs kind of forgot about the system for a while, before suddenly remembering and chucking a bunch in in quick succession. It's not exactly a problem, it's just a bit odd. What is a problem, however? A really big problem is movement. There's only one ship available and the movement feels very sluggish to me. I am not usually the most sensitive to this sort of thing, but it just does not feel right. This may be due in part to what I consider to be the game's biggest weakness, namely the fact that movement is not mapped to the D-pad, something that's also going to render most arcade sticks unusable too. Now, East Asia Soft have said this will be corrected in a patch, but that's not here yet, and I still feel like that sluggishness goes beyond simply being forced to rely on the Joy-Con or Pro Controller's analog stick. Now like I said earlier, the stages in this game are long, and I feel are yet another example of why it is that reviews whinging about the short length of shmups are so wide of the mark. This is, in my opinion, a weakness. Crisis Wing has a decent array of varied enemies, and there are some interesting formations and bullet patterns in the main stages. These are interspersed too often, however, with rather uninteresting sections, or repetitions of what you just did, and these lead to parts of the game starting to feel somewhat drawn out. If the stages were shorter, and only hit you with the good stuff over a rip-roaring 20 minutes or so, I feel like this would greatly improve things. Instead, the game is about double that length, and you can end up on occasion, and I really want to emphasise only on occasion, feeling a bit bored. Now, even though this is rare, to me, that is one of the greatest sins a shmup can commit, and there's really no need for it here. 
there are more than enough good ideas, different enemy types and varied bullet patterns to fill a thrilling start to finish shmup. These overly lengthy stages also hamper the visuals a little. The backgrounds repeat over and over in a loop and when you start each stage they look really pretty decent with each one being nice and different and having a lot of different layers going on. However, because the stages are so long you end up starting to see them as almost abstract scrolling patterns whereas I feel like if the stages were shorter you wouldn't have time to get tired of them. Overall however I do like the presentation here it's not super original and there's not much of a theme going on, beyond mechanical aliens, but that's kinda how things used to be and I do feel it captures the style of those earlier games pretty nicely. The game has a good bouncy soundtrack with tracks playable from the sound menu, the shots and explosions are satisfying and never grating and it's definitely a great one to pick up and just have a quick blast of whenever you're feeling an itch for something old school but don't have or don't feel like setting up a retro console. The options available are very decent. You can rotate the screen, although I think they've confused clockwise and anti-clockwise. You can change your ship's colour, there's a colour blind option, CRT filters and most impressively of all, a practice mode which lets you run through any stage you've previously reached and choose whether to start at the beginning, middle or end of the stage. There's also an interesting little feature that allows you to play the game horizontally. On top of this there is a time attack mode that takes place over a specially designed stage and a boss rush mode which all in all adds up to some pretty decent bang for your buck given the game's low price tag. It's a shame there's no button mapping however as this might have solved the aforementioned issue regarding the d-pad and the leaderboards are local only. So to sum up we have a pretty basic but pretty sound example of the more old school Truxton era shmups with some decent visuals and music, a fun scoring system, interesting enough bullet patterns and enemy formations and an impressive range of options for its asking price. However the stages overstay their welcome a little too much a little too often and the lack of responsiveness of the controls coupled with the lack of d-pad support really hamper the enjoyment on offer. In its current state I would give Crisis Wing a 6.5 out of 10 but you can bump that up to a 7.5 if the patch fixes the sluggishness alongside the addition of d-pad support. Let us know your thoughts if you give this a go, it is cheap so it's still well worth a punt and I'll be sure to update the description when the patch is available. Thank you very much for watching, see you next time, cheers.